What is up? Hey, Persuasion Success Community. Um, so a lot of you guys said you wanted this and I'm gonna give it to you. Basically, what we're gonna talk about is how you can build an alter ego and then make that alter ego a part of your sales persona when you're showing up on calls and then how that will in turn protect you from slumps, how it will amplify your results dramatically, how it will allow you to show up and do things that you yourself aren't even capable of doing. Um, so I'm really pumped about this training. Drop me a comment or an emoji or a like or whatever just to know that you're actually here, you can hear me. What up, Tom? Um, I'm glad to have you guys here and let's roll right into it. So typically the biggest problem that you're gonna have is inconsistency, right? Like you're gonna feel like you're hot, then you go cold, then you're hot, then you're cold, and that is what frustrates people who actually know how to sell to the point that the mind starts to trick them out of performing consistently. And that's, it gets super hard, right? Because there's a lot of variables at play. First of all, the market is constantly dynamic. So a market never stays the same. There's gonna be new competitors entering. There's gonna be people offering new offers that are gonna compete with yours. There's gonna be people undercharging or undercutting you in terms of price. There's gonna be people who are ripping off all of your shit. So they'll literally, like I've seen two ads so far that just basically took our ad and ripped our ad off, right? So you're gonna have people ripping your stuff off. Uh, yesterday I, or last week I had someone come through, get on a sales call, try to reverse engineer our shit and I just realized that they were shopping us. So I told them a bunch of fake shit to see what happens and they might go try and take that and it will blow up in their face now, but it's gonna be fun, right? And they don't get to know what's real and what's not real. But basically people are gonna fake, get on the phone with you, they're gonna try and hack your offer. You know, That's a lot of why we make offers on the phone is so that we can protect our offers and increase the longevity of the offer and how it works in the marketplace. But you know, if you come out with six minute abs, someone's coming out with five minute abs and they're coming out with 60 second abs. That's just kind of how this thing is. People are gonna come out, make hypier, bigger, bolder promises. Or if you come out and you charge a certain amount, they're gonna try and undercut you in terms of pricing. And this is just the market that we're working in, right? So first of all, the market's dynamic. That therefore is gonna impact your results. Second of all, if you're on a funnel, Facebook ads, and, and really any advertising platform that involves like algorithms and AI are gonna be doing the best that they can, but that's all that they can do is the best that they can. They can't give you just somehow magically your ideal prospects all of the time. Sometimes you're gonna have a pocket where you'll get a week of people and they are like bullseye, dream fits, like easy lay down deals. Off of that week, you suddenly think you're like, the best salesperson on earth. Then the next week you talk to a bunch of Herbalife consultants and or welfare stamp people or living in trailer parks in Alabama. And then you wanna uproot your whole system and you think that the marketing's broken. Like just to give you guys an idea, even with our advertising, stuff happens with us. And, and like we had a bad week and a half on ads for our system and you know, m m the team's like, what are you gonna do? And I'm like, just wait. That's all you do is you just wait. I know how the system works. I've been doing this long enough to know how these things, these machines operate, right? And I'm not gonna be affected by the system having those sorts of things, but it's even better and you're gonna be able to protect yourself once you can leverage the alter egos because ultimately what sucks is going hot and then cold, then hot, then cold, then hot, then cold. And it just creates this like totally manic lifestyle where one minute you think you're balling and everything's gonna go according to plan and that you're gonna be a bajillionaire in the next year. And then the next month, suddenly you're desperate, you're looking at other jobs, you're potentially thinking about uh, you know, how you need to pivot your offer or you need to change your business. And this manic state doesn't serve you and it also doesn't serve your prospects or your clients and it doesn't serve anyone at all, right? So. Our goal in this is to give you a mechanism that you can leverage to be able to protect your own mentality, regardless of what's happening in the marketplace, regardless of what happens on your advertising platforms, as well as regardless of what happens in your life. Like you might get divorced, you might have someone find out they cheated on you, you might find out that uh, 
you know, I don't know, your parents are dying or a sibling dies randomly. Like this is life. Shit's going to happen and it's going to hit you and it's going to hit you hard. You might get in a car accident and, uh, not wishing this stuff on anyone, but that's possible, right? And so that stuff can affect your mentality and how you play the game. And what we want to do is isolate your performance from all these other things, right? And so that's what this training is really about. And first, I want to talk about like we had one sales rep one time where he was, he came out the gate, just killed it, like totally blew the door off the hinges. And then next thing you know, he can't give it away. And we're trying to figure out what's going on with this guy. Of course, we go through a list of things and we're diagnosing his calls and his situations. Then I just happened to ask him like, you know, hi, have you been working out? And then that's where I tugged that thread and the whole thing started to unravel. He started telling me about how basically he hadn't worked out in a year. He's at the heaviest weight he's ever been. And as a result, you know, being fit was part of his identity. And because he was no longer fit, then it started to unravel at his sales identity as well. And so basically, he went from being this super confident dude to here I am, I'm fat, therefore I'm like uh, lazy and not good at sales. And it just started eating at his confidence across the board. So literally, I just told him, I don't care if you even go to the gym, just do five push ups every day, like get a small win, let's start stacking some momentum. And then start doing those push-ups consistently. Then he started working out. He started lifting weights. He started getting that momentum. But as soon as he started doing those push-ups, he came back, right? Which is interesting because it just goes to show like how much of your performance actually isn't what's happening on the call. It's what's happening outside in the environment that's going to impact you and how important it is to really protect that identity and the, the vision of self that you have, right? And so the... The ultimate thing that I've learned is that you yourself are a human, therefore you're fallible, right? You're not perfect. So how do we create a version of you that is perfect? That's the question, right? It's not, how do I accept that I'm not perfect? No, fuck that shit. How do we be perfect, right? And that's compartmentalizing inside of our minds and creating an identity or an alter ego that we can then leverage and take it into the world that allows us to bypass all this stuff. Because in another example, we had a rep um, on a team that we're helping out where he was rocking it, like rocking it for six months, basically gets in a motorcycle accident. And then after that motorcycle accident, dude's never been the same, never closed the same or anything. And uh, the business owner actually let him go, but we weren't working on the team at that time. So, uh, we weren't able to help him protect his identity, right? But these things happen. And so what I looked at was like, how do we create this identity? And ultimately, like you want to know what's a weird little pocket of the world that's done it almost better than anybody else? Take a guess. If you guys are on with me, take a guess as to who are some of the best people in the world when it comes to creating these alter egos. And Put your guess in the comments and then I'll give you the answer in just a moment. So let's see if we can get, there's three of you guys on here. Let's see if we can at least get one or two of you guys to put your guess as to who do you feel like are some of the best people in the world to look at when it comes to performance and building alter egos into performance. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any answers from you guys. So, how about you stop being lazy and put in an answer as to what you think? Who is the best in the world when it comes to building an alter ego? Or where would you go to learn an alter ego if you had to go to learn alter egos? All right, well, I'm just going to hold out. Actors, dude, that's actually a really great guess. Um, and in a lot of ways, these guys are actors. So they would be probably actually the best, right? An actor. Uh, if you're looking at, especially like method actors. So 
if you've seen like the performance of Heath Ledger as the Joker, I mean, that's like unreal in terms of building a new alter ego and an identity. Um, and actors would be one of them. Salespeople are pretty good at it, but no, most salespeople actually don't even think this much. The problem with salespeople is I think that their job is just to sell, right? Your job is to understand the human mind if you're in sales. And if you want to understand the human mind, that means you got to study and understand as much as possible. And that's where most salespeople fail. Um, but who I was looking at when I studied this stuff is rappers, right? Because rappers have to perform on stage consistently. They have to carry a persona consistently, regardless of what's happening in their lives or regardless of what's happening in the world. And like, if we just break it down, like, so Eminem, right? Uh, basically everyone in here is going to know Eminem. He's got... Eminem, who is Marshall Mathers, right? Marshall Mathers is almost like the human side of Eminem. And then he has Slim Shady. And Slim Shady is like the dark side of him. It's his, uh, his Mr. Hyde to his Dr. Jekyll, right? And so when Mr. Hyde comes out or Slim Shady comes out, he can be as reckless as he wants. And he can say whatever, he, whatever comes to mind. And he can basically have no holds barred on anything at all anything's game and he doesn't care what people think about him. And so in creating this alter ego, he was able to bypass a normal human thing, which is to be concerned as to what other people think about him. And he was able to go and say all these ridiculous things that garner attention and brought him to basically being the best selling rapper of all time. Like undisputably, he's the best selling rapper of all time. And if you look at that, there's one, but then let's, let's analyze it even more, right? So Tupac, Tupac built Machiavelli, right? So obviously Machiavelli is a real person, but he basically read the prince while in jail, comes out, builds Machiavelli, and basically builds this person and then goes into the world full force with it. Um, notorious B.I.G., right? So again, here you got this guy, Christopher Wallace is his name. He's a shy, fat kid who just happened to be good at rapping, builds the alter ego of Big Papa, right? And Big Papa is that big, jolly dad who's in control of everything, got it all figured out, right? And so if you notice this, all of these people have built a alter ego that have allowed them to play at the highest level consistently, regardless of what's happening. You know, Tupac's over here catching cases, getting shot, shot at, uh, Eminem is literally in the tabloids. People are protesting him, saying how he's Phil, like writing letters to the government that they need to stop him. Like all of these guys have so much backlash and hatred and all sorts of things coming at them, but they've built these alter egos and it's the alter egos that allow them to bypass what a normal person would do and then it protects the identity so they consistently can play the role in society that they're designed to play does that make sense y'all um do you have questions on this also so i want to give you guys a moment if this makes sense let me know if you got questions on it let me know as well and the questions i want to ask you are you know who can you access as an alter ego or what traits does that person need to have? That's a good one to look at. Is like, what traits do I want to embody or amplify in order for me to be better at sales? And then who is an embodiment of those traits? And then how can I implement that, right? And there's some different ways to do it, but a lot of it is journaling in the mind of that person. Um, another part of it is to have a totem. Sometimes people will wear things in order to help them access their identities. Um, and so like, uh, or a thing that they'll touch or they might create a tactile anchor. So like if you touch, you know, your thumb to the index finger at this exact point, then it brings the tactile anchor and then allows you to jump into who you wanna be. So those are some ways that you can implement this stuff, right? And so for me, like, I'll just give you an example. Um, ultimately, and a lot of where this was inspired, you know, Todd Herman's got amazing trainings on this. Uh, Ian Stanley has a cool training book called The Second Self. There's a lot of smart guys who do this. This is not like I'm some genius that just figures all this stuff out. I just study people who are really good at what they do consistently. And this was one thing I noticed is a common thread among people who are top, top performers is they've built this alter ego. And ultimately, there was this one time when I first went to college, they had a hypnotist come in 
and they called everybody on stage and basically of course he hypnotizes the people does his thing gets the people into the trance and he made this one guy dance like michael jackson and this was like an awkward white dude who can't dance and i shit you not when you watch that guy dance it was like michael jackson was dancing it was the most mind-blowing thing i had ever seen like that kid became michael jackson and what that showed me was the power of our subconscious mind if we can get our ego out of the way and then allow our subconscious mind to take over right it's your ego and your sense of trying to be in control or trying to be consistent with a specific identity that you've built for yourself that creates the majority of your problems and prevents you from being able to be as consistent as you want when it comes to your implementations right so if you can bypass that or carve out a niche inside of your head and then you reserve that niche for specific instances, then you can become that person. And also if you look at like pickup artists, a lot of them use these nicknames and they all would use these weird little nicknames and it was because that was a, a new identity. And a lot of times like if you notice when people wanna brainwash someone, uh, they rename them. That's like the first thing to do. And then once someone starts responding to the new name, then they will be able to be like, okay, this person, will shift an identity into a new person. Um, and so just by accessing like a different part of yourself and then designing it strategically by asking those questions I asked earlier, like what traits do I want to embody while on the call? Um, you know, who do I know that really represents these traits at their maximum? And then how do I become that person? And then how do I create some sort of an anchor that I can consistently use to allow me to access that state of me regularly? Right. And so when I would do this stuff on sales calls, um, to me, buyers always want to feel like they're in control, right? Like a buyer thinks that they have the rights and that they're the ones who get to select whether they work with you or not. Right. And like the, the buyers are choosy is the basic foundation of sales. Right. And like when you're actually really good at sales, you flip the script. So you choose who you want to let buy instead of having a buyer choose to buy from you. And as long as you're trying to get the buyers to choose to buy from you, then you're gonna fail. And the moment you start saying, no, I choose who I let buy from me, is when you start to succeed, right? That's flipping the roles, flipping the script. And who's done that better than anybody else is pimps, right? So ultimately, if you study evolution, you study genetics, you study all of this stuff, you'll look that basically women are choosy. The w women are choosy because they only have so many eggs throughout their lifetime and they have significantly fewer eggs and they bear more risk when it comes to childbirth. So a man has significantly less eggs and less opportunity costs when it comes to childbirth. So or it, he has less risk and less opportunity costs is what I meant to say. So that being the case, men aren't choosy. That's why there's the saying that men are dogs, right? It's because the men are not choosy and women are choosy. Well, what pimps did was they flipped that script. They then make women qualify to why they should choose them. And they, they take the role of the choosy one, which is like a totally fascinating thing. And they're basically defeating psych, like biology, evolutionary biology, they flipped it on its head, which is pretty amazing if you study that and you look at it and you're like, how the hell is that even possible? And like pickup artists basically took all that playbook and they figured out how to do it as well. And so there's this one pimp who's like the classic pimp, right? His name is Bishop Don Magic Wand. He's like one of the most famous pimps of all time. And when I started selling, I would embody that trait of I'm going to choose you. You're not going to choose me. And uh, how I embodied that was I created almost an identity. Like people had already started calling me Magic Mike. And so I became Bishop Don Magic Mike. And on calls, I would be Bishop Don Magic Mike in my head, you know, and I'm, I'm playing this role. And that allowed me to consistently perform at a high level. Um, and there are other times, like I know one of the things that fuels me is the desire to prove everybody wrong. Right. And then once once I get clicked onto something, someone tells me I can't do something, then it's just like you going to wish you never said that. And I looked at it. And for me, there's a song by Tupac in All Eyes on Me. So Tupac and just to understand the history of him and what he did when he came out of jail, basically, he had a, a charge against him 
for like rape and he came out of jail because the the lady was lying or at least allegedly lying who knows what's really true but he comes out of jail and he's super pissed and he had just been shot and shot at and so he has this like insane amount of vengeance on his mind right uh, and he wants revenge and he wants to prove everybody wrong, wrong and he wants to get back to what he deserves and so at that point in time in order to pay for his bail uh, Suge Knight put up a million dollars and he had to then record a double disc CD which is All Eyes on Me and there's so it's a double album CD called All Eyes on Me it, he literally recorded it in a week the moment he got out of jail and inside of that there's a song called Picture Me Rolling and picture me rolling in my 500 bands I got no love for these there's no need to be friends and it's just basically like he's vengeance like I'm gonna get what's mine I'm gonna get what I deserve and I'm gonna put you guys back in your place and to me I use that song as a trigger to play that role and to stoke that fire inside of me so that when it came game time I'm there I'm in the zone and I'm ready right and so it's a matter of again asking yourself what are the traits that I want to amplify or exemplify and then from there who embodies those traits right and like understanding the history and the identity of that person and then designing a way for you to step into that role and then you wear that person's identity for a brief period of time as needed and then you shape shift and you take it on and off and you can move in and out of it and you don't lose yourself you keep yourself intact but the person that you are you show up as who you are in the different contexts when you don't need those traits so that was a lot. If you have questions, um, I'm happy to stick around and answer them. If you don't have any questions, uh, what I'd like to see is, what do I wanna see? Ooh, I don't know, what, emo what emoji should I do? Um, you know, an angry face. I want you guys to show me angry faces. If, uh, or do they have the, yeah, this guy. Cool. So drop one of these guys in here if this was valuable for you guys, if you got a lot out of it. Um, if you have other questions on this stuff too, feel free to post it in here. I'll probably jump off now, but I'll come back and make sure to answer your questions later. So I hope you guys got a lot out of it again. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you don't have questions and you just thought this was bomb as hell, leave a little angry cuss face emoji like that guy and we'll do more of these. All right, y'all. See ya.